back. Earlier, we talked about three common workflows for using the Security Onion platform. In this session, we're going to cover the first one, alert triage and case creation. We're going to look at our alerts in the Security Onion console, or SOC. We're going to triage them to determine which ones merit further investigation, dismiss some false positives, and escalate one as a case in the case management tool. Then we'll dig into the data in our environment so that you can see how these tools work together to enable and record your investigation. By the end of this video, you should be familiar with the alert and cases interfaces that are an integral part of using Security Onion. Let's get started. To begin, open up the Security Onion console in your web browser using the username and password that you established during installation. Once you log in, you'll see that all of the components of Security Onion are listed on the menu along the left-hand side of the browser window. For this workflow, we're starting with the alerts interface, so click on the alerts link in the upper left corner of the screen. It's the one with the bell icon. This will open the alerts interface, which is a central clearinghouse for the alerts raised by the various components of the Security Onion platform. Our assumption for this workflow is that you as an analyst will be periodically checking this interface for new alerts and evaluating them to determine which ones can be dismissed and which ones are indicative of potential malicious activity and so require further investigation. Let's take a look at the different options here in the alerts interface, and then we'll look at the triage process itself. At the top of the window, you'll see there's a drop-down menu labeled Options. This controls some of the features of the alerts interface. The top slider, Enable Advanced Interface Features, will make the alerts interface behave more like the normal hunt interface. We're going to leave that one alone for now. You may want to revisit it after learning more about hunt in the next session. The second switch will reveal acknowledged alerts, which are alerts that have already been reviewed by an analyst and found to be false positives or otherwise unimportant. We'll talk about the process for acknowledging alerts shortly. The last switch, to enable viewing of escalated alerts, will show the alerts that you or another analyst in the platform have flagged as potential true positives and escalated into the case management tool. Again, we'll discuss the escalation process shortly. The next option is for an automatic refresh interval. If you want the web console to periodically check and see if there are new alerts, you can set that interval here. This might be helpful if you have an alerts window always open on your workstation so you can keep an eye on potential issues as they are discovered by Security Onion. Finally, the time zone dropdown lets you set the local time zone for this browser window. By default, Security Onion records all logs, including alerts, in UTC and then modifies the timestamps in the web console to bring them in line with the local browser time zone. If you'd like them to match some other time zone, you can set that here. Moving on to the rest of the alerts interface, here in the upper right corner, you'll see there's a count for the total number of alerts that have fired in the time period we are reviewing. This is the total number of alerts, not the total number of unique rules. So if a single rule has fired 100 times, that counter is going to say 100. Below that is the time selector. By default, this is set to relative time, as here where it is reviewing alerts for the last 24 hours. If you'd prefer absolute time to review all of the alerts for a particular period of hours or days in the past, you can switch to that by clicking on the clock icon here. As you can see, there are some presets here on the left, or you can set a custom range by clicking on the calendar dates and typing in times appropriately. For now, let's go back to relative time. Looking at the alerts themselves, you'll notice that there's a query dropdown in the upper left corner. By default, the alerts are sorted by the name of the rule that fired and the name of the module and security onion that the rule is in. Here, for example, all of the alerts are from Suricata, the network IDS component, but it's common to see alerts raised by components like Strelka or the Sigma rules from detections as well. Each alert has a severity level in this right-hand column, which is set by the rule itself and can be tuned if it's not appropriate for your environment. If I just want to see high priority alerts, there are a couple ways to do that. One would be to left click on high in this column and select include. That will add that severity rating to my query. You'll notice at the top now, there's a blue balloon that says event severity label high. That means we've added that to our query to only return alerts with that label. Another option is to sort this column by severity level. As you can see, this puts all the high severity alerts at the top, followed by medium, and then low. You've probably noticed that there's also this count column to the left. 
This indicates how many times an alert has fired, in this case in the last 24 hours. If we want to see the individual alerts, we can do that by either clicking on the number or clicking on the name of the rule and then drill down. As you can see, this is eight separate alerts generated by the IP address 192.168.10.124, reaching out via SNMP to 10.40.0.103. If you see something like this in your environment, you would want to investigate whether this is expected traffic or not. Is this 192 IP assigned to something like a network management console or a monitoring solution? Do we expect it to be looking up data on this 10.40 address using SNMP? If this is known good traffic, the best solution is to make a note of it for later tuning and then acknowledge the alerts by clicking on the bell icon on the far left. This will remove those alerts from the queue so your fellow analysts don't waste their time on it. The tuning options in Security Onion for these Suricata alerts are quite granular. You can turn a rule off entirely, or turn it off for a particular IP or group of IPs, or set thresholding rules so that an alert has to fire a certain number of times in order to generate an alert in the interface. We recommend that you spend some time after deploying Security Onion tuning the alerting rules to better match your environment. It's often underappreciated how important tuning is to eliminate false positives and reduce analyst fatigue. Just to circle back for a moment, we can go back to the standard query, and then if we go to Options, Acknowledged, we'll see those SNMP alerts that we just acknowledged. If someone accidentally acknowledges an alert, it just sets a flag on the alert record. It doesn't delete it or render it invisible, so you can always go back and find it if the acknowledgement was a mistake. Now, let's take a look at an alert that's more likely to be an indicator of malicious activity. This Zbot post request one looks promising. That seems at first glance to be an indicator of a compromised endpoint inside our environment, reaching out to a command and control server for further instructions. Let's click on the count column here to drill down and see the individual alerts. It looks like we've got a few sets of alerts here. Three different source IPs going to three different destination IPs and all on port 80. If we want to get some more details about the alert, we can click on this caret on the left-hand side to open it up and see the details. Scrolling down to the Suricata rule that fired, listed here under rule.rule, .rule, we see that this is an alert for HTTP traffic between our home network, that is, our internal network, and an external network. It's checking an established HTTP flow for particular headers, and looks like a pretty specific high-fidelity alerting rule. Scrolling up a little to network data decoded, this is the traffic that actually triggered the alert, it looks like we have a client sending a post to a PHP site using an IE 6.0 user agent, which is definitely strange for our environment. The site is ishibaddy.com, which also seems a little suspicious. If we want some more context around this flow, we can pivot from any field in the alert to a packet capture by clicking on the field and then actions and PCAP. Looking at the packet capture, we've got an established connection between this host on our network and this external web server, passing some sort of encoded or encrypted traffic back and forth. This definitely looks like something that merits further investigation, so we're going to go back to the Alerts tab and escalate this into a case. Here in the Cases interface, you can see that we've created a new case with the name of the alert that was just escalated. This gives us a place to track our investigation, take notes, and refer other pieces of evidence that we find while hunting through Security Onion. Let's click on the binoculars icon to open up this new case and see the details. As you can see, there's some metadata about the case along the right-hand side of the screen. If you've got multiple analysts working in the platform, you can use this assignee dropdown to assign it to someone for investigation. In this case, I'm just going to assign it to myself. Directly beneath the assignee is the status of the case. Since I'm actively investigating, I'm going to change this from new to in progress. By default, there are just three status options, but this can be modified easily to fit whatever triage scheme or workflow you use in your environment. Below the status, you'll see there's some details of the case that can be set. There's a severity option as well as a priority. There are options for traffic light protocol and permissible action protocol, 
if those are frameworks that are used in your environment to denote information sharing and reaction limitations. And finally, there's a category field as well as tags, so you can group together similar investigations and correlate findings. Along the top of the window, these tabs correspond to different pieces of information about the case. The Comments tab, which is open by default, allows for markdown compatible entry of comments and observations as you work on the case. Each comment is marked with the username of the author as well as a timestamp, so collaboration by multiple analysts is easy. The Attachments tab is for uploading files or artifacts from the investigation. For example, if you have a process for malware cleanup that requires a screenshot of a clean scan from an anti-malware tool, you could attach that here and it would be saved with the rest of the case notes. Observables are individual indicators that you come across over the course of an investigation. You'll notice that the source and destination IPs were automatically extracted from the alert event that we escalated earlier and placed in the observables for the case. There are a couple of icons here under Actions as well. The crosshairs icon launches a new hunt for this observable, while the lightning bolt launches any analyzers you have configured for this type of data. See our documentation and our YouTube channel for more information on analyzers. Events are events that were escalated from the Security Onion interface and added to the case. Right now, there's only a single event in here, the one that we escalated to open the case, but we'll add another one shortly. Finally, the History tab provides an audit trail for the contents of the case. As items are added, modified, or removed, the action and the account responsible are recorded here. Returning to the alerts, let's see if we have any more alerts for this particular source IP. That might shed some light on why we're seeing Zbot implant behavior from this endpoint. By clicking only, I'm saying that I only want to see alerts involving this particular IP address, and it looks like I have a lot to choose from. If I sort by timestamp, it looks like I've got some Zbot download activity, followed by a C2 post request, and then another EXE download over HTTP, perhaps a second stage. Let's check that out. Scrolling down to our network data decoded, it looks like this is definitely a Windows executable being downloaded. You can see the classic MZ header at the beginning here, along with this program cannot be run in DOS mode. If we want to see all the information about this particular flow, we can pivot from the network community ID to the hunt interface for more information. The community ID is an open metadata standard that Security Onion applies to any network logs that it ingests. It's a hash of the source and destination IPs and ports, along with whether the network flow is TCP or UDP. What this means for you as an analyst is that it's easy to pivot on this field value to find all of the logs related to a particular flow, since that set of attributes is usually unique. As you can see, this correlation process brings up a dashboard with all of the information that we have on this network flow. There's some network metadata produced by Zeek, as well as some Suricata alerts. Scrolling down, we see the alerts listed here, along with the HTTP requests that the client made to the server on the outside network. Now, one thing to remember about Zeek is that Zeek file records don't have network information. So if there's a file metadata record, you'll need to correlate a second time against the con record. There we go, and now we have some Zeek file records. If we scroll down and we open up this Zeek file record, you'll see it contains a lot of information about the exe file that was transferred, including the hash values. If we check virus total for any results related to this hash, we'll see that, as we suspected, this is definitely a malicious file. The endpoint is definitely downloaded and is running malware and needs to be re-imaged. Let's add this file record to the case that we're building as well. Now if we go back to cases and we refresh the events, you'll see that the file event has been included here as well. If we scroll down, we can add that file hash as an observable. And now when we return to the observables tab, we can use the crosshairs icon to launch a new hunt for that hash, just in case it shows up anywhere else in our environment. 
And now we can continue to iterate. We can return to those original Zbot C2 alerts, check the other IP addresses, see if we can find evidence of their infection, derive IOCs from the packet captures and network metadata, and build a tidy record of the investigation in cases. In conclusion, that's how the alert triage and case creation workflow functions in Security Onion. The alerts interface acts as a starting point for informing analysts about potentially malicious or problematic events on the network. The analysts can then review those alerts, choosing to either acknowledge and dismiss them or escalate them into cases for further investigation. And once something has been escalated into cases, that can be used to record the investigation, including related events, observables, attachments, and more. I hope this video was useful for you. Please join us in the next one for more information about the hunt interface and ad hoc hunting for new and novel threats. Mm -hmm.